we're going to look at chromic acid oxidation of an alcohol to a ketone or an aldehyde. This can be done with primary or secondary alcohols. If you use a primary alcohol, you're going to make an aldehyde. If you use a secondary alcohol, you're going to make a ketone. Now this is very, very similar to Fischer esterification. The difference is that instead of a carboxylic acid, you use chromic acid. And the neat thing about chromic acid is you're using chromium, or chromate. And uh, this particular metal can undergo several different oxidation states. So it can have a variety of different states, and that's going to really help the reaction go. Now we're going to do this with the alcohol that's in your book. This is 2-propanol. Now this is very similar to what you've done before, but there is an acid source available because this is chromic acid. And you usually also add a little bit of sulfuric acid in this as well. So what's going to happen here is that you protonate one of these two doubly bound oxygens to the chromium. It doesn't matter which one, but you are going to protonate it and there will be resonance stabilization of this complex, very much like you saw with Fischer esterification. I'm just not going to take the time to draw all of those resonance structures. I'm just going to draw the one. But be aware that there are a variety of resonance structures here. There's quite a few. Just not going to draw them. Well, that chromium has a lot of positive character, and as such, it will be able to accept our nucleophilic oxygen, and we'll be able to break this pi bond here. And you'll make a pseudo-carbonyl, or a pseudo-tetrahedral intermediate. It's not a tetrahedral intermediate because it's chromium, but it is very similar in its reactivity to a tetrahedral intermediate, though it is not one. And like other tetrahedral intermediates, you now need to do a proton transfer through solvent from the oxygen that has the proton to one of the others. So our solvent here is our alcohol. And it will act as the proton acceptor. So that's the proton transfer to solvent. And then we have our pseudo tetrahedral intermediate, which is really not a tetrahedral intermediate because it's chromium, not carbon. Now, any one of these oxygens that has a single bond to the chromium at this point in time can act as the proton acceptor. The one you do not want to give it to is the oxygen with all this carbon stuff attached to it. That would not be a good choice. But any of these OH oxygens would be perfectly good choices. So pick one of them. We'll pick the one that's closest to us to pick up the proton and you give electrons back to the oxygen. As this happens, you do the proton transfer from solvent.
All right, so at this point, one of the oxygens will come in and act as an electron pair donor to make a pi bond and kick out our really good leaving group, which is water. So you can see this is very much like a sterification. It's almost exactly the same. Now I want to make sure that you see that all the pieces and parts that were on the previous slide are still here. So, previously we had two OH groups, and one of them forms the double bond. Okay, so you have the two OH groups, and one of them forms the double bond. You have the doubly bound oxygen, you still have a doubly bound oxygen, and then you have the oxygen with the carbon stuff attached, you still have the oxygen with the carbon stuff attached. You kicked out a water, there's a water that's been kicked out. And you have an alcohol solvent. I didn't make the right alcohol. But you have an alcohol. If I could draw the right one, that would be good. Left over as well. Sorry about that. You also have this alcohol. I don't know why I drew that. Um, at this point in time, you need to remove the proton from the chromium complex, and it can be water or the alcohol that does the job. It doesn't matter which one. Choose one of them. I'll use water since it's closer, and give electrons back. So that you end up here. Now the book assumes that you can get here all on your own. Because they showed you Fisher sterification, I don't assume things like that. So I hope that helps instead of um, on mechanism 15.3 going through step one and just magically getting there. Thought you might like seeing how you got there. Just basically a Fisher esterification. And then you've uh, got something that's been protonated. So you've got an acid source still available to you. Okay. Now, this next step is the oxidation step, and it really is basically a beta elimination. Um, water is going to act as a base and remove a proton from the carbon here. So there's also more water. This is actually going to be neutralized by base. You neutralize that at this point and get rid of it so that you can continue on. Uh, you don't use a strong base, but you do watch your pH so that you can neutralize any excess acid in here. So now you have water as your solvent. And it will act as the base. This is why you have to have a secondary or a primary alcohol to begin with. You must have a proton available on this carbon. If it had been a tertiary carbon, there would not be this proton to remove and you'd have a problem. Now as it takes this proton, that carbon-hydrogen bond is polarized toward the carbon and carbon will use that pair of electrons to make a carbon-oxygen double bond. As that carbon-oxygen double bond starts to form, the chromium-oxygen bond is also going to break. Now, normally oxygen takes those electrons, but it's going to have an octet, and so it doesn't want them. And chromium, being a metal, can have different oxidation states, and it's actually going to take those pair of electrons and form what's called a chromite ion. And that's okay, because chromium is a transition metal, and it doesn't care really what oxidation state it's in at this point. It can accept or lose electrons depending upon need, so this is all acceptable to do because you have the metal present. So, at the end of the day, you have your chromite and there's actually a couple of different resonance structures for this. This is one, um, another resonance structure for it. It's actually probably a little more likely. Be this one. Okay, and it, it doesn't really care. 
the negative charge would be up here in this case. Um, we've also produced what we were after, which was the ketone. And we've also produced the acid. We've regenerated that. Now, if you wanted to do this with a primary alcohol, you would need to take your aldehyde and go through this entire process again. So you take the aldehyde and bind it to chromic acid and make another chromate type complex. And once it's there, remove the hydrogen and reform another pi bond so that you can do this again. Okay?